I've been trying to like just you know work on some footwork stuff that I like yeah. I used to be really I could hit some shuffles and all that and man I am I I tried to get my body to do it the other day and it just it was like you know you used to be able to play a symphony and then you you pick up the instrument and a fart comes out it was just it, <laughs> it was not fun man. well that's why I just like I look at Neil and yeah. like there would be there was a point in my life where just looking at Neil his chin alone would have banged me. <laughs> <laughs> but now his whole physique from top to bottom I'm like wait but Tom Brady is older than I am that's too true, so I can't yeah. like I can't yeah. uh, well this thing's slowly falling apart yeah Good. it uh, should <laughs> fuck, go fuck yourself. Like, a good amount of comics have, you know, left here and gone to other places and done pretty well. How come you? How come you stay here? How come I stay here? What, what's wrong with us? Uh well, for me, I made people. Yeah, see, and that, they live here. That, that's that's just an excuse, James. <laughs> 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 no, my uh, like honestly, if my dad hadn't abandoned so many mm. children. I would, I'm sure I would be capable of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I could totally ditch that out of my Son of a kids. bitch, he ruined if, your comedy yeah. career. Yeah, that, he fucking stepped on my dick by <laughs> dipping out on all these kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, now it's I'm just like, hack. Yeah, I yeah. don't have to, I don't have to be a great dad, a good, as long as I'm there, yeah. at least I'm doing better than that piece of shit. I so. remember my, uh, my dad picked me up one day, we were going to play softball, and I was, we were playing on opposite teams, we were playing each other, so he picked me up instead of the other guys. And we're on our way. <clears throat> I remember he was trying to have like a moment with me and he reached over and he was like, hey man, I just want you to know that uh, I think you're doing a great job as a dad and I think you're just a much better father than I am. And I was like, yeah, it was pretty easy. You know what I mean? Like I just, <laughs> I just didn't do a couple things. You know what I mean? Like the bar was set pretty well. Yeah, yeah. So. I, uh, it was so funny. I was sitting there. Like my, my, my brother like died in prison and he didn't really get to know my dad at all. And so we were sitting there, like talking through the glass window, um, just going back and forth. And he he said to me, he was like, "What was it like, you know, having him as a dad?" I was like, "I don't fucking know." He was a truck driver. Right. He was gone like thirteen days out of every two week stretch. He came home. He beat the shit out of me, yelled at me, and left. Mm. Like. Yeah, so not so good. Yeah, you didn't miss much. <laughs> yeah. like, I think you had it easy here in prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so your mom remarried, right? Mm. And then, so there was a grown man. How many siblings do you have? Hmm? How many siblings? Four. Yeah, Four. Uh, how many different? Uh... Uh, okay, so my dad uh, had two kids with the first one, uh, one kid with the second, and then two with my mom. Gotcha. When did your brother pass? Uh, oh, it's been... It's been about 15 years now. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah he had uh, skin cancer. And oh, all right. They yeah, just didn't I remember, get treated I remember hearing uh, you telling me some stories about that. What a fucking crazy life that yeah. was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What's up, Neil? How you doing, dude? Yeah, man. I uh, I remember you telling me stories about your your brother. And, you know, yeah, I think we fucking, were probably both. He got it in. We were probably both drinking pretty heavy, so I don't remember any of the stories. We could always. Uh, I mean, the, the, the primary room. thing, he was a drug runner. He brought, he went up. He basically went up into the mountains, picked up the truck full of weed, and drove it back, and he was supposed to drop it off at a house. And it was all supposed to be no contact, pick up, no contact. He walked up, got in the truck. Key, he knew where the keys were supposed to be hidden, got the truck, drove it to the house, parked the truck, dropped the keys where he was supposed to drop them. It was all no contact. That's what it was supposed to be. Um, he was getting to uh, the drop-off house, and uh, we were supposed to drop it, and three guys came out of the house. And I guess he, his understanding of as the event took place, they were trying to rob him and pretend like he never showed up with the drug. Oof. And so uh, he got into it with the one with the gun, got the gun from him, and then killed all three of them. Um, and then his half brother had ridden with him and was like drunk and passed out in the truck. So he mm -hmm. drug him out and then got him into the car they were supposed to be leaving in. Then went back and drugged all the guys into the house and set the house on fire. Jesus Christ. And the truck. And then because he had done that, he had to worry about the guy that he worked for looking for him. Mm. So he had to get out. Plus, he knew the cops might be looking for him. So uh, he Maybe. Then proceeded. Well, so he <laughs> then proceeded to go rob this couple to steal their truck so that he could get away. And in the process of robbing that couple, uh, he killed them, too. Wow. Because and I was like, I was like, I was like, really? They didn't. He was like. He's like, I know this sounds crazy to you, uh, but it's the truth. Once you kill one person, 
it's not that hard to kill somebody else. That's wild, man. So, Sorry, I'm late. That's all right. <laughs> you look wired, dude. Get away. Yeah, you look. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, talk uh, talk about. Something I wanted to ask you about. Um, like I knew you. I didn't know you had lost your leg in a bike accident. Yeah. What? I, I, I mean, maybe you've told the story on the podcast, whatever. But like, what actually happened? Because like, I ride a lot, and so I was uh, making a left hand turn, and the guy there was a guy coming from the opposite direction, and he he was texting, and didn't see that there was a red light. And so he was coming up behind the cars at the light yeah. and swerved around them and just nailed me. Oh. Just teep on me. Yeah, yeah. And then it just... What were you riding? A Harley. What, do you still ride? Uh, not on the street. I, oh, okay. I got into dirt bikes for a few years doing okay. enduro riding and stuff. I really enjoy it. All my friends sold their bikes, though, so... Mm. <laughs> what, after that? <laughs> no, no, after we started riding. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, started, I lost my leg in 2013. And I started doing uh, dirt bikes enduro stuff like trail riding in yeah, like yeah. 2015 and we did that for about three years i mean have you thought about getting back on the road and running at all or is it just it's not worth it it's too okay. many too many people distracted i mean I've, i see i see three or four accidents a week just around here yeah just people pulling out in front of people uh, actually my wife just got into an accident last week yeah this kid just pulled right into the side of her wheel i mean just drove right into her yeah yeah so, so should you start walking too? Like, should we give up the cars? I think cars are a little safer than bikes. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I can dodge better on my bike. I've been hit on a in a car before, and I didn't get launched through the air. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> that's a, that's yeah, a reasonable yeah. take. On it. And yeah. I didn't lose my leg. Either. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, he's uh, one motorcycle. Well, I have accident. no argument to make here in defense of my position of you should ride. Yeah, <laughs> you just, you just like the you you like the motorcycle. I love yeah, it though. Yeah, yeah. I do love it. I, would, yeah, yeah. I do miss it. How long have you been riding? Um, like. Dirt bikes as a kid. Uh, then there was a long stretch where I had no bike because there was just simply no way to be yeah. a, a fucking broke comic. And also... Yeah, you can't bike. live on your motorcycle. Yeah, I mean, you can. <laughs> it's rough. Yeah, it's you can. Right now, I can yeah. leave here. I could throw my pack on the back uh -huh. with my tent and everything. And I could easily make it a month before yeah. I... Uh, I want to I wanna contest the word easily. Fair. Uh, you're 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 in your mid forties now. Forty four years old. So you're you're right. not, no, when I moto camp now, when I do, when I go out and ride and I take my pack with me, uh, my back hurts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's oh, for, sleeping on the ground, and sucks. it's for fun. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's totally different. If you were in your thirties uh, and you said a month, four, five, six months, I'd be yeah. like, he's a savage, absolutely. Right. No, but you're right. You're right. I know. Well, also that's if you had, true. But also, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you had an adventure bike, that would be fun. Like it would be fun. I would. Yeah, I yeah. think to take an adventure bike. And and go out for about a month and and be on the road and camp and stuff. I think you'd probably enjoy it for at least a month. After you that, you can would... also do everything you do on an adventure bike. Yeah, pretty much on a Harley. I mean, the gravel sucks. Yeah. Versus, but I mean, how much off road? Like, I see so many guys I with would adventure do a lot, bikes. But... I mean, I see guys yeah. with adventure bikes, and like the closest thing to off road they do is pulling into the gravel parking lot at their campsite. Yeah. Like, it's like, come on, man. Riding the rain. Like, you, you could be on a Harley. Like, there's no, yeah. you don't need yeah. Bobby tires. For the campground, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, those adventure bikes are pretty comfy too. The they, way you, are. The way they are. They are. They're fun to ride. Them. Like the Harley's new Pan America. I oh, really yeah, cool like looking, that. Yeah. I mean, I know some people that are like, "That's not a real adventure bike," but I, I they're fun to ride. I used to love the uh, Ducati Multistratas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Real nice adventure bikes. I like a, lot a nice of power tricycle, too. you know, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I'd love a trike. There's like going to be a, a point where I'm obviously going to have to switch to that because I'm going to be too old to hold up. I, you know, I, yeah, I, I couldn't I, I couldn't manage a bike. I, I've been trying to exercise and, and the amount of weight I can't lift is uh, <laughs> it's all gravity. hilarious. Yeah, yeah, it is all gravity. I mean, they're literally like five foot one, like 85 pound girls that will hop on a fucking Dyna and just go. Yeah, so. they're in good shape. I yeah. not really. <laughs> I don't know. Those bikes pretty, put, there's if, a lot of out of shape dudes on Harley's. So. Yeah, there's <laughs> like the most unhealthy people in the you world. You can be unhealthy and have a certain type of strength. You know what I'm saying? And if you are unhealthy and you don't have that type of strength, if you if you are unhealthy and you're constantly lifting up a bike, you have bike lifting strength. But well, you it's never not, lift a bike. No, like it's, if, it's, it's I all, promise you, ninety percent of the dudes that ride, if their bike fell over, I right, need help. To all get. right, I'm it's coming actually, to ride your bike. All right, it's, it's all legs and core. <laughs> Really? Yeah. yeah and and I have neither. But it's of not those. that much. But so. you have more than most. Like, you were <laughs> I have in more than shape. There was a point in your life that you were in shape. 
yeah, which yeah. is more than most people who ride yeah. motorcycles can that's say. Fair. You're an athlete, that, too. That mm-hmm. base of muscle that is still kind of under there. I tell you, I don't feel like an athlete. <laughs> I you don't was, look like one either. <laughs> <laughs> Go fuck yourself, Jim. <laughs> I was, uh, I've been trying to like just, you know, uh, and really it's just, at this point, it's just breaking a sweat for me. And that is hard. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm struggling to do that. I've been trying to like just, you know, work on some footwork stuff that I, like yeah. I used to be really, I could hit some shuffles and all that. And man, I am, I, I tried to get my body to do it the other day. And it just, it was like, you know, you used to be able to play a symphony and then you, you pick up the instrument and a fart comes out. It was just, it, <laughs> it was not fun, man. Well, that's why I just like, I look at Neil and yeah. like, there would be, there was a point in my life where just looking at Neil, his chin alone would have banged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now his whole physique from top to bottom, I'm like, wait, you're about, how old are you? 42. 42. Yeah. You are two years younger than me. <laughs> but Tom Brady is older than I am, that's too. True, so I can't, yeah. like, I can't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, this thing's slowly falling apart. Good. Yeah. It yeah. should. <laughs> fuck, go fuck yourself. Like, I just tore my bicep a few, we- good. few weeks good. ago. Good. Go. <laughs> <laughs> good. Try heroin. It's fine. <laughs> well, also, keep keep working out. Don't buy a motorcycle. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I well, I, I can't buy a motorcycle for Great multiple advice. reasons. Yeah. Get a good Sage swim, advice, Also, get a motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't get a motorcycle. I'm not. I can't. Uh, I'm not a motorcycle person. I'm not a fast car person. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm not. I. I, I am. Uh, I am on punishment from anything. Fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because I. I. I ruin fun, man. I. Uh, I. I take it to. I have too much fun. I have too much fun. It's, it's You're extreme. Why, yeah. I. I'm just like. I'll zone out, or I'll be in a mood, and all of a sudden, rah, you know. And, and I don't have, uh, I don't have self control when it comes. I don't care about myself enough to slow myself down. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, dude. I just, if I had that motorcycle, I, fucking, I don't know what happened. My show gets canceled, and then all of a sudden, I'm fucking 105 miles an hour in the in the rain. You know what I mean? I just don't. I don't think about safety. That's man. not how people get hurt on motorcycles. Though. That's how I'll get hurt. 105 on it. in the rain is not the dangerous part. It's the taking a left turn. That's fair. Yeah, at somebody a else stoplight. You, usually, that is how people get hurt. Yeah, on but I'll be the one. Or riding wheelies in flying. traffic. Right, but that's yeah. douche shit. That's, that's that, rare. There's a difference between yeah. the guys that are douches that are out there on the fucking crotch rockets and yeah. like those guys. I, I hope those guys get. I hurt. do love sport bikes. <laughs> I used to mostly ride sport bikes. They're but fun. But if I rode fast or aggressively, it'd be like out in the county, yeah, a, away yeah. from people, or mostly on the track, mm, yeah. on the racetrack. You know, and that's it's, it's, a, it's a closed circuit. So I would drive a fast car safe, on a racetrack, rich, but I would I, I shouldn't I shouldn't own a, a fast vehicle. Like the sportiest car I should have is like a Camry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The turbo, you know. the Camry GT. Yeah, yeah, I don't even. I don't even. You know get the V six, not the four cylinder one, though, right? I don't know what any of these letters are. I don't know. Uh, you, so you, uh, I, talking to Neil last week, he said he saw you at a. Uh, you guys were doing a spot at the same place. He said he saw you do a new bit that was great. You're getting back on the road and, and yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, coming out of COVID, I uh, as the world restarted. I kind of didn't. Yeah. Like I did some shows. I did some stuff. Just not enough. And like we, you and I have talked to like, like he and I get together every now and again and just share stories of our broken brains <laughs> and, you know, really get into it. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I might be getting schizophrenic at this point. <laughs> like it's like, that was, that was March. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think I you like, both oh. have missed that one. So like, yeah, yeah. I think I'm so far. Yeah, yeah. I think it, the whole thing's coming unwired. But uh, so I just, as COVID ended, I, didn't initially start going full force, but also in my brain, I was like, well, the, the youngest, he started kindergarten in the fall. Let me get through this spring summer and get through all of it, get him into school. And then I can just start going. Like I got free days. Um, his mom, like she can pick him up from school so I can be on the road. I don't have to go get, cause for the longest time, if I did a road gig, I had to go get my mom, which is two and a half hours away, bring her to the house. So she could stay at the house because Cass, you know, she works, you know, 45 to 60 hours a week. Oh. Um, so you're adding a five hour drive on, to on top of right. drive so, to Sheboygan. Yeah. Already. And also it's inconvenient for my mom. And when you're driving 30 hours each way to a gig, mm. adding in that extra. Was there a piece of you that was, uh, was, uh, these are all excuses, by the way. I was just lazy. <laughs> yeah. Same. <laughs> like but, to me. <laughs> but I mean, I, I think the way that you were doing comedy for a while, when that break happened, when it, when we had that forced time out the, uh, during the pandemic, 
did you have this? I what I what happened to me was I felt like, oh Jesus, what a perfect time to quit. You know what I mean? Did you I, have that at all? I one hundred percent. I'm sure subconsciously that's exactly what I was thinking. I didn't have the it's a good time to quit thought. Okay. I I think I've always been too delusional to imagine quitting. Delusional uh, but, in what way? Wait, what? You, delusional. Just, just the idea that. You have the same delusion. I don't think as much as I do, but the same delusion. We think this is going to work. <laughs> you have to. It'll never everyone work. Everyone in this, everyone in comedy, had to be a certain level of. It's rarer to be a big name, truly successful comic than it is to play in the NBA, than it is to play in the NFL. There are more, literally right now, more people playing in the NBA than there are people that can sell out a 2000 seat theater. Mm. And that's a little dip because so many TikTok stars are are bringing those numbers and up. And we're like, like let's let's go after that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, so it's so to believe that we could get good enough, even if we're not on their level in terms of success, just to be good enough to be on par with them, where we could share a stage with the Chappelles or the Birds of the World, that takes pure delusion. Now, sometimes delusions can turn into reality. Yeah. Right? Well, the but ones you that need the delusion to start. Yeah. You, is that a thing with business? You got to be a little delusional to get started. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that requires high levels of success takes it takes yeah. a lot of risk and a lot of. I love the immediate uh, agreement. So oh yeah, there's no question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've always said I'm crazy. Yeah. Like really? I'm insane. Yeah. 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 But They're like, you... what's your secret? <laughs> Insanity. <Yeah. laughs> uh, you know, there's a. I mean, there's a clinical term. It's called narcissism. <laughs> like well, that's probably part of it. I mean, but there's. I think it's something else. I think it's like. Um, no, it's not. Ex you're right. It's not exclusively. I, I think it's there's some kind of a drive in in us that. Uh, well, there's two different things here we're talking about. So business is like an ambition drive, and some of that probably comes from growing up in poverty. For me, you know, just the fear of being in that situation in those circumstances. Like it's there's there's a be there are better options in life, you know, if, but, if you can attain them, and then. With with comedy, I look at that more from a creative. That's a for me. That's a creative endeavor, and it's it's right. an art. It's an art form, and, and there's there's a challenge to that art form. That's like an intellectual challenge. And it's like, hey, if I can, if I can hone this skill or this craft to a certain level, I can achieve I can achieve success through this this craft. But also, there's a when when it's an art form, it's not about the success. It's about creating something that's that lots of people can appreciate yeah. and, and i think that's that's what we're chasing and, and that's it's uh it's very rewarding is it but hold up there's a lot more when i was talking about the delusion thing there's a lot more millionaires in this world than there are truly successful comedians yeah yeah for sure like so it's so it's less delusional to be like i can go into business it still requires delusion to imagine i'm gonna be a boss ceo motherfucker like that still takes because it most people that try it's it less don't, abstract but right yeah. but it's i mean it's is there a little bit of a mix of those two things, you know, for people like us who... Uh, I need a kneel. Yeah. Just like you need... Like, I need a kneel in my life because if I had a kneel in my life, I would be a thousand times more successful mm. because, like you, we both struggle with the... We can go on stage and we can do the job. We did the work to do that. Right. We put in the work to do that. But you and I haven't put in the work to... Make Any the other? business connections to make the networking like not even close to enough. We made friends with comics because we like right. comics. Like it's partially a fantasy for us. Mm. I wanted to be able to hang out with Bill Burr that was and it. him look at me and talk to me and know my name. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, and that's part of that's for success for me. Yeah, but I it's I a wish strange I, thing right like you know. Uh, that was my idea of success when I started comedy was like getting to hang with comics. Yeah. That was, I, I didn't, I never thought about, I never thought about, um, I'm going to get to do this or I'll have this much money or it'll be, the, it was just like, can I walk into a room and have my favorite comics? Be like, ah, Eric, you know what I mean? Like it, or, um, if not that be able to, and we've talked about this, hold my own, on any stage with any people. Right. And there's been times since I've done comedy that I've had that. And then there's, you know, it's gone away. I think I, 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 I struggle with that. I got to get back to it. But those were the things I had when I started doing comedy. And, and so when I, I have a hard time relating to when, when people have other, um, 
goals or dreams or ambitions when it comes to comedy because I you know and that's the part like when you're talking about a joke or you know how do I interact with this crowd I'm like yeah it's this 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 and that right but when it's uh how do I how do I get work I'm like I'm the wrong guy I'm the wrong guy. I've been the wrong guy the entire time. I had no idea. I don't have no. Idea. I still have no idea how it works. I've been better at that than you have, but yeah. not even close to enough. Not yeah. like I am. If if my work ethic existed at all, when it comes to any of that kind of stuff, I would be doing so much better. Mm. I just, I am. I'm the least effort possible type person in so many <laughs> things in life. Yeah. Just, what are the things you see that are? Uh, when you when you hang out with comics like uh, James and I, and are coming from a business perspective, what are the things that you see that are uh, the deficiencies, and then what are the benefits of being deficient? You know, <laughs> well, I've really been working on this lately too. Uh, it's it's looking at things honestly, as honestly as possible, and 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 also before I get into this, I think it's I think it's easier to make a million dollars in business than a million dollars in comedy. Mm-hmm. I think it's way easier, but I think there's just more opportunities. Uh, but that said, with from looking at, yeah, you can sell back apples. to your question, yeah, yeah anything. Um, but I think in comedy, from what I've seen so far, and what I'm trying to figure out is, um, you know, most of the guys that have really made it, like the the big stars in comedy, the big names in comedy, you know, not, a lot of those guys aren't aren't really better comics than you two. Uh, the 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 level of uh, talent is the same, but they uh, spent thirteen years waiting to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but they they no, but thank you. That's they they made these sacrifices at young ages to move into these big markets and and work in these big comedy clubs and get seen in these in these big spots. And what I'm trying to figure out now is I know the world's constantly changing and and as technology changes, you don't need that anymore. You don't need to move. It changes anymore. faster and faster, but there's still some aspect of that where I think there's still a value in getting into a right. Uh, if you're, if I was a young comic, if I was in my early twenties or mid twenties, yeah. I'd move to Austin or Atlanta or LA or New York or somewhere. And, and I would, I would just pursue it hard, you yeah. know? And, and I think that's, that's, that's a sure way if you have the talent to get there, I think after well, 10 years or so, you like you, you said the word talent a couple of times and there is a, base level of natural talent that that eric has that i have that you have that there is a base level that you have to have just to even have a chance at doing this at any level trying to figure out if i have but then beyond that i mean dude i saw you the other night like you have really developed from where you were the first time i saw you to where you were just the other night at that open mic I told you that. I don't yeah, just I'm walk up lot. to comics and say, dude, like you've really, you've made a significant jump since the last time I saw you. So no, the base level of talent is there. So that after that base level though, it's really is about how do you get up? Do you do the work? Do you like Eric has more pure natural talent oh, than yeah. even some of the best, like, naturally he's more comfortable or appears not is but appears more comfortable on stage yeah even when he's shitting his pants super talented than most than most even like some of the you can name some people that have made hundreds of millions of dollars in this that don't have the natural thing that he has right uh but after that baseline of talent all the talent in the world if you don't do the work Mm. if you don't get out and get on stage time yeah eric is better because he did the work. Eric was naturally good. You could yeah. see it when he started that, okay, this is a guy that can do this. But he did the work. We're lazy, but for whatever reason. Yeah, that thing doesn't feel like work. As many times like we've, we've quit, we, don't, we haven't quit. Yeah, I remember uh, we were at uh, a club in Clayton. And one of the guys said to you, uh, big guy, I can't remember his name. He said, if you don't think about quitting comedy two or three times a year, you're not really doing it. And I was like, oh, I needed to hear that. You know what I mean? Because that was a thing that it is just a difficult thing. I think the moving to a bigger market, I think it is different now. There's still so much value in it. It used to be, I think, the value was going out and the amount of time you could get up and spend on stage. And then some you were more likely to be seen in those markets now and then get a big agent yeah and get you up you know and now the thing is it really is just the state the stage time is more important and and the prestige spots you can get 
well, you know, with the with the internet and all that. So if you are a, a comic who can uh, navigate social media in a, in a specific way, you're more likely to be seen even if you're not getting up as often. And one yeah. of the benefits I, I always felt like the benefit for me being in North Carolina was I was, you know, when all my friends were moving to New York and doing 24 minute spots, uh, 20 individual four minute spots every week. And I was doing four half hour spots. It right. seemed more efficient to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's better uh, for that craft. But there's yeah. also now, but there's benefits to both of those things. Right. And then as you're, as you're, uh, learning how to navigate the social media, which I'm not a person who fucking specifically enjoys that. And I know you're not a person who specifically enjoys it, but you have enjoyed some, some success with that. Right. And, and, but there's a, at this point, it's better to stay here and build up a online following of two to five million people. Because once you get there, try to get an agent right now in LA mm -hmm. as a young or middle-aged actor with no social media following, they don't want to touch you. Yeah. Like well, they don't want to touch you at all. I mean, there are actors that have been in the game for 30 years. You you know their face. You might even know their name. I know. And they're personally. losing their agents yeah. right now because they don't have the social media following. And part of opening a movie now, a studio calculates budget wise into how much to invest in a movie in part based on its star's social media presence yeah. because they know the movie will open better. Right. Well, plus, there's so much content. Right. They have to have a, an established base to, yeah. to get it's, traction. It's more dangerous now because it's easier for something to flop. I think I think I saw something recently with uh, maybe Matt Damon. He, he he executive produced a movie that he was in and or he was going to, and they're just like, there's just no money. Like, there's no money to be made. It's, it's too hard today to yeah. produce a a high budget studio film. Uh, but, and also the indie stuff's so good now too. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot easier to produce films today, but, uh, but in acting, I, you know, I have an agent, I have a good agent here in North Carolina and Charlotte and uh, shout out to Luann. But uh, it's, it seems to me that it's, um, it's, it, it seems easier to get an agent in acting than in comedy, but it seems like it's easier to get work in comedy than in acting because there's less gatekeepers. So it's, but I was, I was going to say the same thing. The world is, is all digital now. So like yeah. even in acting, all of the auditions I have, they're all digital, they're all taped and I submit them. And then I'll, I've booked, you know, network series or network jobs from just taped auditions. And that's pretty common today for, yeah. for guest star spots. Yeah, there's a lot of guys in North Carolina that are in Georgia all the time. Yeah. Could, uh, one of the, one of the acting professors <clears throat> at, uh, at UNCG, I'm um, good guy. Um, he's, like he was on, uh, what's the Netflix? The big show Ozark. Oh yeah. Um, he uh, for the entire first season, he was one of the like top eight cast members on the show. Yeah. And but he just you know he sent in his audition tape from Greensboro. It's Atlanta, so it's easy to get down there. So as a SAG guy, like he's always he's getting more opportunities. Yeah. Just because now they film everything in Atlanta, like not everything, but majority so of stuff. Is, of, Atlanta's uh, the biggest market. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a great market, and it's, we're lucky to be here. It's only five hours, so yeah. So. I think the the point with agents and managers and uh, getting work and acting and comedy, the big difference, what I see and what I've seen for uh, forever uh, since I've been in it is agents and managers have very little interest in getting. Uh, comedians work uh, whereas you know so it's easier to get money but it's less money and it lasts uh, 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 not as long as acting money like with acting money you're still going to get a check whenever the show is yeah um, an agent's only going to make a certain percentage of whatever money I make in Wisconsin this weekend you know right. what I mean? yeah, if you're it, SAG it's 10% yeah. yeah and so but it's and then that's forever and forever there's no royalties yeah for the show I did at Good Nights four weeks right. ago. Yeah. Agents and managers, all they are is people who make money doing the things that we don't want to do. I'm fine with it. I'm I good did, with it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the, they're literally like the the hustle, the like the phone calls, the booking, the thing that this is where this audition is. Yeah. This is the, all that kind of stuff. They're and they deserve. The, I like that's why I don't understand why people get mad and get yeah. paid. Like they deserve yeah. their money. They they're 
doing the job. A million percent. I have. I'm I, just being an artist. <laughs> you know? so, I have a running bit where it's like, if I could get somebody to do all that work for me, I pay him twenty percent. You know what I mean? And then, and then every time I mention it afterwards, the number goes up until I'm paying them. You know what I mean? Like yeah, if yeah. I don't have to do the work, 115 percent of my money, you can have it. If I don't got to fucking, all I got to do is show up and be funny. That's it, man. In, yeah. in the acting world, it's a little. It works a little better for the agents and the artists because in acting. Uh, now, if you're if you're non-union, like we're just getting started out, yeah. you pay your agent twenty percent because they're not going to get residuals from any of the jobs you get. Yeah. But once you're union, once you're SAG, they they get ten percent. But it's not ten percent of your of your money. It's the the studio actually pays them on top, so they give them a ten percent on top of what you get paid. Yeah. Now you do give them ten percent of all your residuals. So when you get your residual checks, you send them their ten percent happily. Because also in in acting, you've got to send that ten percent. Yeah. Ugh. In, in the, I just Venmo it, but in the acting but that's world, the with acting too, yeah. though. Once you get into acting in a paid level, I'm not talking community theater, but when you get into professional Network acting where you get stuff, paid, yeah. there's always a paycheck. Yeah, we have to spend as comics years developing this skill. Like actors don't get paid when they're in college, learning, you know, taking no, an no. MFA in theater. So it's the same. That's where they're doing the work, but our work is actually still doing the job, even at a small level. Interning. So, so like, yeah, it's interning, and it's what are you gonna do? Give somebody like, you can help me finish this beer, like for years. <laughs> I give you twenty five percent of this beer. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got nachos. You got na- you <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, hey, I'm two. eating French fries off of somebody else's plate yeah, that yeah. they left here. You can have. Some I money. actually pulled a beer off a table. Because those guys left because of his jokes. So there's an empty <laughs> beer. There, so. <laughs> well, also in acting, uh, the job you can't get the auditions without the agent. Yeah, you know those, those we don't we don't have access to those work. auditions. They, yeah, they they come from casting directors. That they spent years making that system. Have relationships with that that agent has built relationships with those casting directors over years. So you you can't have those opportunities. Now you'll occasionally get a a referral from an actor like a, another actor that's a friend of yours or something. They'll refer you to the to the production and then they'll reach out to your agent because of that. I've had that happen. But, uh, like my friend Kurt, he, he recommended me for, uh, NCIS New Orleans. And I got that. I booked mm-hmm. that role because of that. Uh, so that'll, that'll happen occasionally, but uh, well, same thing like with Tom, with the miss Pat stuff, like Tom got the part on the show and he got the, it was all just because Pat, Pat wanted him on the writing room and then they gave him a part actually on the show. And then when he did the other show, they had seen him, like doing stuff on Miss Pat's show uh, before the show had even come out. Tom and was on Miss Pat. He never mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. He was no, I didn't know that either. Yeah. yeah, this fucking <laughs> this guy. He, dude, I swear to God, he, he's the he. I as bad as I am at promoting things, Tom is. Did you so watch Single worse. Drunk Female? No, I haven't watched it yet. He's got a I, decent sized part in that yeah, television. Was, he's yeah. the bartender. Yeah, we right? helped him. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah we, uh, we helped him film his audition at yeah. the, yeah. the bar one night. Yeah, I, yeah. Is he? He'll just. He never mentions that role. He's only talked about being in the writer's room to us. He doesn't talk about it on the podcast or online or anything. And he definitely never mentioned he had a speaking role on the fucking show. Yeah, he played a comic on the show. Oh, that's he, he downplays everything. A comic that he she really shit does. on, but yeah. still a comic. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> I think that's why he didn't talk about story. it. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. like, I'm never going to make it. And he's, ri- he's a writer on a, yeah, he a, a major show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A big but series. <laughs> that has been when I started comedy. All I wanted, because I met Tom early on, yeah. was to get to where Tom was at that point. Yeah. Which I did. Yeah. And then Tom got, oh, man, how cool would that be? Like, Because every time Tom accomplishes something, I'm like, well, I guess, one, it's possible. Yeah. Uh, two, uh, that we'll just add that into the list of goals. Yeah. But, I mean, that guy works yeah. harder yeah. Yeah. than we do. He does, for sure. You know, you are, like from what uh, from what I've heard, that you're. I keep lumping you into my lazy category, but you're doing all this. You're he, he works hard. So he's a hard worker. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, maybe he kind plays himself too. No, I don't think so. I I, I, <laughs> I, I, will, I will take credit for every fucking thing I I, I do. I, I will do that. But I, you know, it's, except for right now. <laughs> well, it's the things I it's the things I don't enjoy doing. You know what I mean, yeah. I. I, I I have an adverse reaction to doing things I don't like doing. I, I can suffer through some things here and there, but the the reaching out and asking people for stuff is never going to be a thing I'm going to do. I'm never going to fucking be on my show and be like, what's up, YouTube? I, you know, oh, I, yeah. I'm I just that not that guy. I'm never going to I'm never going to send an email to a booker. 
I want to be asked to be places and then I want to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to, and that really is it. I just want to know that I'm good enough to be there. It's the, the same, level of entitlement. Yeah, that's fine. Involved. Just, no, I'm not saying, I, I have the same problem. Yeah, yeah. But the level of entitlement mm. that makes us think that is the difference in a lot of ways between, like, I've, you and I have both been lucky enough to work with some people that have made it to the top Absolutely. of the list. Yeah. And those guys send the emails. Yeah. Now, even now, making hundred million dollars in a year, they still send the emails. Or their agents do it. Yeah, anyway. they don't do no, it. No, but they're they're not emailing the booker, but right. they're all over their agent. Like, yeah, yeah. hey, when is this tour going to be done? Yeah, when yeah, but at that level, though, you're friends with your agent. Like you, I mean, even even it's me free, at a at a, I mean, a low at this level, point, I'm friend with I'm friends or friendly at least with every booking agent. Yeah, it's a relationship. Yeah, it's have. yeah, but like my personal agent, I, I I have a good relationship with my agent. Like yeah. she's she's a friend, you know. And, I'm going to push back on the entitlement thing a little bit. I don't. I'm not positive that it is a sense of entitlement. I'm, I'm, You're just wrong though. But yeah, okay. that's me. Yeah, <laughs> totally willing to be wrong, especially if I'm figuring it out. But I I'm not positive. It's a it's a a thing of entitlement. It's, it's, uh, I've always had this feeling. I don't want to be in places where I'm, I'm not wanted. Right. And so, uh, am I making mistakes? A million percent. Absolutely. I, I think a sense of entitlement would have to come from thinking I'm, I deserve more than I do or, uh, deserving better than I, I do. And I, I don't think I believe those things. So just on a technicality, I think I got out of the entitlement thing because I don't think I'm, you know, when people tell me I'm a good comic, I know I'm a good comic. I know I'm a good comic. I don't think you I'm were a- like we got to get back there. <laughs> Same here. Like, you know, yeah, we gotta I, get- was, I was a good comic. Yeah, we got to get back to being good comics. Yeah, I, yeah, and that's it. Is like trying to get back in that shape. Um, but it, you know, I, I, I'm never going to ask people to support me. I'm never going. to, You know, I, I just don't have that thing. So I, I, I'm i not positive that it, maybe it is. Maybe I'm missing the definition of what entitlement means because I feel entitled in other aspects of right. my life. So this one, I, I'm unsure. You want to be invited to the party. I want to be good fa- enough. and the fa- But the fact that you believe that you are capable of being invited to the party mm-hmm. when... George Carlin wasn't good enough to be just invited to the party. Mm. Dave Chappelle wasn't good enough. Yeah, but I don't want invited. those things. But no, I'm, I'm. Well, that's the top part. That, yeah, I don't but want I'm to get saying, to that party. Like, I have no interest in being like, at that party. No, that's why. That's why you're North Carolina comedy legend. God damn it, I hate Harry it. Do this. from Boston. <laughs> yeah, I hate him. I'm gonna lean Boston into that Boston native eventually. North Carolina comedy watch, legend. Watch me come up with some fucking merch that says North Carolina comedy legend Eric. Dude, Tony. I will wear that shirt <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it, Dude, it, I spread the gospel of Eric Trundy um, everywhere I go. I appreciate it. Yeah, maybe I'll get a, a gig in Sheboygan. Yeah, what this? Will. The whole point of this. Is that Eric needs an agent? You know, I, <laughs> he can use know, an agent. I, sure. I just, yeah, I don't understand, man. I, I don't understand. That's what I meant by we need a Neil. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. quit trying to make yourself famous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be an agent. Yeah, yeah grab the grab. We have the talent. Remember, you said it. I, uh, yeah. I want a comedy agent too. <laughs> <laughs> I ju- yeah, I don't know, man. I, I just self promotion has always been a thing. It's never been. It's just never been my thing. When I was, uh, uh, I've seen roofing, you promote other people though. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind that. I don't mind it. I don't know what that thing is. But when I was roofing inside and I wasn't the guy who's like, I'm the best roofer insider in the town. But I was. You know what I mean? And the work showed that. It wasn't, I, did, I wasn't trying to get invited to the roofing party. I was just fucking roofing so good that everybody was like, I want that guy because the, the price is good and the work is strong. And that's the same thing with my comedy. The price is good but and the work is that's strong. That's the thing. You have been able to, and same with me, we have been able to survive in this game. Survives the word. Off of just, I don't have to send the emails. I don't have to, I don't have to do that. I'm good enough. Cause you know what? It's the truth of the matter is, is you and I both, every third time we log into online, somebody's asking us to come do a show. Mm. They are. And that's cool and all. And that's great. And that's a good feeling, but it's, My expectations are wrong. I, I completely understand that. Yeah, yeah th- those emails aren't always going to come. 
you know, but I, I, but when they do, it feels so good. It does feel good, it man. Does. Yeah. I got one last week and it was just like, you know, it'd been a little while since I got that type of email and it was like, I think, you know, it really did feel nice, but it, I, and I think that is what the uh, importance of the team is and all fucking creative or I'm sure business. I don't I wish I knew anything about business, but I, I would assume that team is a big deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, well, for me, business is still creative. I, I still approach well, yeah, business sure. from a creative perspective, yeah. but Really? That's why that's why me and Daniel work so well yeah. together. Because Daniel <laughs> is creative. he's a creative guy too, but he's he's very analytical. Like yeah. he's very much a, a math analytical minded individual, and I'm I'm a very oh. visual visual minded person. So it, we we um, uh, compliment compliment each other well, but um, also I don't think you're I, I don't think it's uh, entitlement with you. I think it's 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 actually a type of humbleness. No, I, I, I what, think it's the it's let the, me. Call him entitled <laughs> so yeah, that he'll yeah, yeah. start doing the work. Like, look, I don't know if Eric's entitled or not, but I know that he needs to fucking. That's right. Send it is entitled. You're right. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, wrong. I yeah. need to send the guy. And I, I, I love that. Like, you, I love that you think you could light a fire under me. You I don't. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think uh, I, I understand what you're saying. It's there's a a negative sentiment behind tooting your own horn. Like, it's it's a. Uh, I don't like it either. It, 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 and also, a, it's like I should. If you're good bullshit, enough, you shouldn't. It's you shouldn't white need guy to bullshit. say that is white guy. You have it, never seen a black entertainer that gave a fuck about tooting their own horn. This is white that's guy. That's not true. That's not true. That's bullshit. bullshit. No, that's 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 just silly. That's, that's just not silly. silly. What you just said. It, there, uh, you're talking uh, personality types. There are personality types when, um, you know, what I do on stage is less effective. If I'm the one who's like, oh, you got, dude, you got to come see the best fart jokes in the country. It's just not that. And, and, and to throw race in it is. is, is no, I'm is telling you, though, <laughs> Kevin Hart, all these guys. Yeah, you guys are uh, masters of, of promotion. There's white guys what who are masters of promotion, too. And then there are black guys. Yeah, but it's, Patrice O'Neill was not a, a, a fucking uh, magnificent promoter yeah, of his work. And that's why Patrice O'Neill wasn't way more successful than Kevin Hart. Right. So you, to say it's white so again, guy stuff versus black guy I'm stuff tell, is no, silliness. But you look, you look uh, just, at the entertainment just, industry. You got, you, you got your monkey Ike paw Turner, on the jar of rice right matter. now. You, you, I'm telling stuck you in. right now. What James is trying to say that white people and black people are different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, women be shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Got, no, uh, but it, uh, you it, don't. You just don't for the record, see not. as many black <laughs> entertainers that aren't willing to self promote because they know they have to. Well, yeah, you wouldn't see those entertainers because it's not self promoting. I know, I know, uh, tons of tons of people of all races who are not good at promoting themselves, and I know a bunch of people of all races who are incredibly fucking probably well, too good at doing it. There's also a thing with Eric too that I've noticed. I think another aspect of that too is that he's worked really hard to get as good as he is, and he knows he's really really talented. And he's a great comic. And I think... So he deserves... That's what entitlement means! No, it's, a, it's not deserves. Yeah, it's not deserves. But I, but I, th no, I think it's more of a disappointment thing. I think it's it's like... Uh, it's like I, I don't think put in, I put in this much work and I've worked this hard. I know, I'm, I know I have these abilities, these skills, or the skill set to do really any show, any level of show, especially club shows and stuff like that. And I think with COVID was a big setback i think it pushed a lot of a lot of guys like you guys where you're sort of really gaining some momentum and then it stopped everything and then it's like oh i gotta fucking start over now because everybody sort of dropped down that's uh, that's a good i hadn't even i, I mean honestly like uh do no, you I feel I, I feel <laughs> i feel disappointed in other aspects of my life right, right, right um you know here's the thing man is like the things that I'm that people are supposed to want in comedy, in life, and whatever, I don't value the same things other people value. Right. I just don't. I I have no interest in being uh, a, a, a super famous comic. I have zero interest in a Netflix special, other than to just get people to come to a VFW show. Right. I you know it really is. I just I like intimate audiences. Uh, I've done theater shows. I think they're cool. Yeah, I, I, you know, I brag about them whenever I fucking get the chance. I just did it, but Which is I, why you are North Carolina comedy God, legend, it, Eric. <laughs> but I, I, I don't want the same things, and so I don't feel disappointed. Uh, I don't feel entitled. I this thing feels pure to me, and when you take something pure and you have to be the one that's touting its virtues, to me it becomes less pure. I, I, I just like doing it. Uh, I would like 40 or 50 people 
to be in the place every time I do it. But I, I'm not going to beg anyone to because in my experience, having people who don't want to be there be there is not fun for me. And so but when we were talking yesterday... Promotion's not about having people that don't want to be there. It's about letting people know that do want to be there that it's happening. I'm just... I, I, and I'm... I'm I am... Yeah. Look, I am terrible at this too. But it, that's the reality that is... A certain level of self-promotion isn't getting people to be there that don't want to be there. It's making sure that people that want to be there know it's happening. And that, you know, I, I'm not looking down on anyone who is great at self-promoting. I have quite a few friends whose promotion skills outmatch their talent. Uh, I have quite a few friends whose talent is incredible and so is their fucking self-promotion skills. Uh, it's just, it's never been a thing I, I've been into. It will never be a thing I've never been into. And we could break down why. It doesn't really matter why. It's fun to tease you. But like, yeah. it doesn't really matter why. The truth of the matter is, is all of us have the things that we like to do. We have the things we don't like to do. And there are those of us who the things that we don't like to do are a part of why we are where we are. And sometimes that's fine. It doesn't. Well, that's like, the, again, if the goal, is, if your goal was to become Carlin, then you'd be doing it wrong. But that's not your goal. Yeah. Your goal is not to have 10 HBO specials. That's not what interests you in comedy. So that's so there's no reason for you to need to be pursuing that other than it's fun to give you shit. Well, yeah, Eric is just an artist. He just yeah. likes to create. Yeah. And as long as he's creating, I think he finds some happiness in that. But but also, so, Eric, say, I want to hear you say, I want to hear giddy. you, Eric, I want to hear you say, call yourself an artist. Any, I am an artist. Say, I, I, say I'm an artist. I'm an artist. I, no, I've been are. for the last couple of years. Like you are see, too, man. That's I mean, a, we all are. Yeah, yeah. that's it's a just word. Fun to tease. That's is. a word that yeah. uh, had a, a real heavy stink and some stigma on it when I got into comedy. It's like, oh, you're a fucking artist, and there's still comics who believe that shit, but that that it's a bad word. It's not, and you know, and, and the reason I'm super into it is because. For 10 years of my life, I was only interested in comedy, and that was the only fucking thing that I thought had any yeah. value. And now it really is just like a fifth of what I want to do and what I enjoy doing. Yeah. It's just the thing I enjoy most. Well, the, I mean, the reality is, is, as comics, we are artists, we are craftsmen, and we are entertainers. Mm. Yeah, Like, those are the three things that a stand-up comic, just the onstage part. Because there is the art part. But there is also the craft part, which you, the better the craft is, the better the art. Like you can see somebody that can be expressing the shit out of themselves whittling a piece of wood, but they yeah. have to develop the craft to make it beautiful enough that other people see it and go, that's art. Right. It's still art. Oh, yeah. And to them, it meant just as much making it, but they never developed the craft. So it's not as it's not going to be as received. Well, you got to make a bunch of bad yeah. shit. It takes before a lot you, of time. Yeah. yeah. You you going through that a little bit oh, right now? Yeah. <laughs> Neil, Neil had a real uh, a stiff one last week, and you know I was trying to explain to him, I was looking him in the eyes and be like, wasn't as bad as you thought, uh, you know? Because I I feel like most times doing stand up like seventy percent of the time it is not as good as you thought it was, yeah. and it's not as bad Absolutely. as you thought it was. And I was trying to, you know, it's it's a difficult thing to tell somebody hey man i know you feel this way but you're wrong right. your feelings are wrong you know what i mean i mean neil be honest with yourself you will never be as bad as you were the first time i saw you on stage <laughs> you won't be and you'll that's never be true, as bad yeah. as you were the first time i saw I you on stage i hope not i mean I, it's like and i'll never be where i want to be either right you, even yeah. bombing i guarantee you were even, no, no matter how your first set went even bombing you were better than you were the first time you went up. Yeah, well, you my have first... different expectations of yourself now yeah. than you did at the time because you know more, but you're better. My very first set I did was in acting school, and it was great. It was actually, a, a, it went really well. It was garbage. It went really well. But it I got a lot great. of laughs. Right. Yeah. But that didn't make if it. You, what, how do you think you'd feel if you watched it now? Oh, it'd be horrible. It, yeah, right. it is a terrible set. Like, it was, yeah. it's bad writing. But it was, but it had some punchlines. It had the, some of the right format, and it got laughs. You're cursed with, um, you're cursed with progress, and uh, you've gotten better. So now you can look at things and think that yeah. they are worse than they are. You know. Well, what's difficult now is I looked. At, I told Eric recently. I, I looked at this um, tape I had from just what six months ago, mm -hmm. and I hate it. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah. But it was. I thought it was a decent set, and I sent it to some people. 
And I, and I even submitted it to a couple of festivals. I'm like, God, I hate that I submitted this to festivals. Like it's, I, I was embarrassed when I w- went back and rewatched it. But that's so. the growth. That's look, it's your naked baby pictures, man. Yeah. We all, you know, fucking mom, grandma, whatever pulls out the album and all every girl you ever dated in high school gets to see what your dick looked like when you were a baby. <laughs> I've never <laughs> been embarrassed by those photos. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's not even so much that you're embarrassed by the dick. No I mean, one's it's like, the fact it's bigger, that yours bigger. If nothing changed. <laughs> yeah, I had a giant dick as That's a baby huge. as well. Beautiful. If the girl's <laughs> that, like, oh, that looks the same. Ah, uh, the glory <laughs> days when it's it matched my body. It's always going to be that for you. Like, you're always going to look back on what it was. Yeah. Until, unless you get to a point like where Eric and I got where we had gotten to a point and we have gone back because we have so much happened in the world. Yeah. With COVID and all the stuff that we... We Dude, I, we always say COVID was bad for the con. I COVID, COVID was great well, for my COVID comedy. was great for me. Yeah, I hate to say it. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry about all the fucking people that died, but like you know, if, if COVID didn't happen, I I wasn't gonna make it back uh, from that road Fair trip. Enough. I was quick correction. To. COVID was horrible for me financially. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. great for me with comedy, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, COVID couldn't have been as bad for you financially as your obsession with Bitcoin. I'm not obsessed with Bitcoin. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Last time you and I talked, you were really selling me on cryptocurrency. I, I like cryptocurrency. I think it's a good. I think it's a great uh, idea, and I think it's a. I think it's something we could use as, as a society to fix a lot of our financial problems. I know it was just funny because you were like, but it's we, it's a hard. That's a difficult road. Do you to, remember? Do you remember that conversation? Oh yeah, yeah. You were like, no, no, look how much it's gone up, and the blah blah blah, and that was right before. But all money's like that. It's yeah. all a construct. Yeah, but I, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, <laughs> fun. I'm, I'm, just saying, saying, I'm still you, pro crypto. If you put too much money in crypto, about the time you were really talking it up, uh, you lost a lot of money. I lost a bunch of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah champagne. But it's still in there. I still have yeah, them. Yeah. It'll come back. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> if I had a bunch of money, I'd lose a bunch of money too. You know. Yeah, I just <laughs> use lose it like a casino. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Your gambling is just a little bit more uh, above board. So. Se- seems better. <laughs> yeah. uh, we got a few minutes before we got to. Uh, so uh, what do you got? What oh, do you got? Real, real quick. Yeah. Because I have to jump out too. I got to yeah. physical therapy from arm. Uh, what you guys are both talking about uh, and, and, and uh, actually what James had said about knowing your strengths, because we talk about this a lot on the show mm-hmm. anyway. Um, I think it's important to know what you're really good at and know, the, and know your weak spots too. And that's where I think uh, the business, my business mind help is helpful. Yeah. Uh, it, if you if you can identify your weak spots and your and your uh, the places where you fall short, that's where you need to you need to find someone else to help you in that area. Absolutely. And that's from a business perspective. That's what that's what an entrepreneur does. Is we we have a uh, we'll find a, a thing that we want to do or a what project that we want to find out what the fuck it is you actually do. I do a lot of things. I know. That's you always your answer. Well, now it's mostly just consulting. Is he a drug dealer? <laughs> no, no, no. Just a business guy. Yeah. Uh, business guy. Business guy. That's right. Um. Uh, you want a car wash? Like, what the fuck is it? Well, I've owned a lot of different uh, physical businesses too in the past, but uh, I, I, I we'll talk about it later. I've no, got no, a no, little no, partners and stuff. I, you don't have to. It, it's a long. That's a yeah. that's a whole podcast. He owns a lot <laughs> of businesses. Um, uh, but anyway, you know, if, if if as an entrepreneur, if you if you have a certain project that you want to take on, then you're not going to do it all yourself. You 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 identify <laughs> the the people that you need to accomplish this thing. You find the experts in that area. And, or in different areas that that will that are required to create this or to make this project happen, and, and I think the same thing in comedy. You know, if you're bad at promoting yourself, you need to hire someone eventually, or find someone to help you with 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 promotion. If if you're, you know, and you have to get an agent, I guess eventually at some level to to book certain gigs. Like if you're doing theater shows, you need an agent working on. You need a business manager or you a business manager. A, like it's like most of the. Very highest guys don't have an agent. Either. Really, they just have a businessman. Okay, like uh, like you thought, like Stanhope has um, Greg. Yeah, well, well, Greg does his road. Greg's his road stuff, but uh, Headley, Hed, what the hell's his name? He, he's actually refers to him as his business partner, though. Like he doesn't. Yeah, even, and I think that really is what it is. It's like you know, Hench, no, what is, I can't remember. His name. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The uh, yeah, you know, you can be a great pitcher. You still need somebody. You yeah. still need a first baseman, you need a yeah, shortstop. You absolutely. Can't do all that. And, you know, I think that is, that's the thing I wish I would have known. I, you know, and even if I hadn't known that 10 years ago, I, I, I wouldn't have, A, I wouldn't have been in a position to maintain any professional relationships uh, at the level I could have. And I, I, I would have squandered the opportunities. But uh, that would be my advice for, like, uh, my comedy kids who are moving to New York and stuff like that. One of the first things I tell them is, like, 
find your people, man. Yeah. You know, and and there's a few of them who are out there really doing it, and they're they're killing it. The the aspect of team is why I got into comedy is because I I'm not a I've not team always been a good yeah. teammate, and you know, so trying to be now is is a is a new thing for me. I uh, I've been in positions of like leadership, but that was always easier for me because it's like I I, yeah, I call the yeah. jobs. But really, like valuing other people's opinions and trusting them to do the things that I'm weak at and recognizing those weaknesses has been has been a big thing. And that's me recognizing the weakness that I am. Uh, I do have a sense of entitlement, and I, I am a little selfish. Thank you for fucking following me. Nah, just throwing you a bone on this one after that whole white black thing you said. Uh, well, it's, that's true. I don't give a fuck what you say. Black entertainers are so much more dedicated to self promotion because they have to be. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's fair. I'm not going to argue with that, but it's just the the. the Whatever, or the, the way you use it, I think is a, a bit it's silly. Factual, but it's just the truth. <laughs> it's not, we'll and if you, we'll talk that, about that on the on the next episode uh, of uh, just, the creative business. We got to get out of here. You yeah, just I don't want to go. Your title is all. See it. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the white half of you has really <laughs> fucked you. And this is all I'm saying, Eric. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. All I'm saying. Yeah, half of me really likes uh, uh, self promotion. Is that what you said? <laughs> no, I'm saying you should tap into the half of you. That likes I'll call my mother. I'll ask her. All right, fellas. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks, man. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>